All right, so today we are going to be going over instancing, timers, and a new form of physics body. So let me show you um, how I put a couple of these ideas together to make some new things for our, for our game. So first off, we have this cactus here. And the cactus is throwing rocks. And that rock you just saw fly over our head is from a catapult that I've got launching rocks in the corner over here. Um, that's working differently. It's also using timers and instancing. So you can see how this can be done a little bit different. And those enemies that popped out of that yellow box, those were done using instancing and timers as well. So you can do a lot with instancing and timers to add things at a periodic rate into your level. So that means like every two seconds add something into your level. So let's go ahead and see how this was done. Uh, first off, uh, create a new scene. And once you've got a new scene, you should see something very much like what you see on my screen here. Click plus add a node 2D. We're going to name it Enemy Spawner 2. Alright, and then underneath that go ahead and add a sprite. And then select it again and add a timer. Alright, so we can call this the spawn timer. And let's go ahead and give this a picture. We'll, uh, should we give it? Let's give it... We don't want another cactus spawner. We'll just, we'll just make it this little portal orange here. Alright, boom. So now we see it. Uh, we got this little portal. So the enemies are going to spawn where this portal is now. And um, if you put this like up in the air, they'd like fall out of it. Alright. So the thing, next thing we need to do is we need to add a script to our root node. So select the root node and click this little add script. And we're just going to call it enemy spawner. I'm calling mine two because I already have one. And I'm making a new one to show you how this can be done. So go ahead and create. You can call it enemy spawner or whatever you want there. Now the first thing we need to do is be able to tell it what scene we are going to be adding in, so in this case it would be our enemy scene, or it could be, in the case of the cactus that was throwing rocks, it could be a rock scene. Um, it can be a scene, any scene you want can be instance in, and um, I'm sure that you guys can have a lot of fun with that. So we're going to go export, and we're going to add something called a packed scene, and we're going to call it spawned scene. All right. So now, when I select this enemy spawner, I will have this variable here under script variables called spawned scene. And what's cool about that is that now, if I want, I can spawn anything in that I want. So like, let's say I want to spawn this guy in. Then I drag him into spawn scene, and that is going to become the scene that I will instance into our level. The next thing we need to do, and this is very important, because this is what actually makes the magic happen. All right. So select your spawn timer and look down in this inspector panel here. You first off, you see this wait time. Wait time tells it how long to wait before it times out. And then the timeout is going to call some code. And I'll show you how to set that here in just a second. And that code is going to do whatever it is you want it to do. So that every one second right now, it's going to call some code. If I wanted it to do it every two seconds, I could do that. I just change the wait time to 2. And if I wanted it to do it every half a second, I could just do 0.5. So you can use part numbers too. You don't have to use full integers. You can use floating numbers. Okay, so the wait time right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 1. The next thing down from there is one shot. Now the one shot tells it to fire off only one time. And after that, it turns itself back off. Auto start, which we're going to click and turn on, tells it that as soon as this thing becomes added to the scene, that we want it to start timing out. So we want it to start counting down the time. And that is why we set it to auto start so that this spawner immediately begins spawning enemies into the level. All right, so the very next thing we need to do is click the node tab. And here we see signals and there is a timeout signal. So double click the timeout timer, go ahead and hit connect. All right, and you'll see that this added a new function to our script. It says on spawn timer timeout. And this is where we actually want to add some code. So the code that we're going to add is not too hard. We're going to say var 
for variable new enemy equals spawned scene dot instance. Now remember I kept using that word instancing. Um, this is what it is. So an instance is just, think of it like a copy of a scene that you add into another scene. And that's called an instance. And it keeps track of all of its own uh, state, like its position and its speed and its health and all of the things that that scene may keep track of. It has its own collection of all of those. So it's called an instance. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that this enemy gets added at the location that we wanted. And the location that we wanted is wherever this spawn timer has been placed. So we're going to say new enemy dot set position. Now we might need to set the global pause. And it doesn't know what this is. It doesn't realize that it's um, that it's a sprite. And so the autocomplete is kind of failing us here. But we're going to say set global pause. And we're just going to use get global pause. And you can see that get global pause is definitely a node 2D thing. But because it autocomplete doesn't know for sure that the spawn scene is going to be a node 2D, it didn't help us here. So we're going to say get global pause. And what that does is it makes sure that this enemy gets added at the exact same spot that this spawner is located. And that location is going to be at the center. So if you were to select this, it's going to be at the middle of this box here. Okay? I'm going to go back into my script. All right, so that adds, that puts it where we want it. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to add it to the scene. So we're going to say get parent dot add child new enemy. Okay. So now we have added it to the scene and uh, let's go ahead and test this thing out. I'm gonna save it and then we are going to test this out. So we're gonna go back to our level. We're gonna go level 2D and I'm going to and I'm going to 